Hey guys, Bill from Blender Brit here, back with another tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the principled shader. Now you've probably heard of this already. Uh, you may have watched Andrew Price's uh, introduction to the shader. It's going to be in Blender 2.79 when it's released. Um, and basically it's a PBR shader, uh, quite similar to the one that was available uh, or is still available on my website. Um, but it's now built into Blender and it's actually got more features. Uh, it's, it's really good. So let's get started. These are the uh, three materials that we're going to be making today. Um, the one on the left there is a uh, material using polygon textures um, from the, the Polygon website, which is a which is a, pa a paid website. Brilliant collection of uh, textures and uh, really really easy to use but what i wanted to do is show that you, you can still make some really good materials at free textures as well and show you how to do it so anyway let's stop gabbing and get on with it because it this probably is going to be quite a long tutorial though i will try and try and speed it up if i can so what i'll do is take these materials and remove them boom so we can start fresh. Uh, just to show you what the uh, setup of the scene is, um, I've got a HGRI, uh, that one in fact, <laughs> from HGRI Haven. Uh, a basic setup that overrides with a different background color, so I don't really want, want the, to see the, the, the lighting in the scene. I just want the lighting from it. Um, all of the uh, rectangles here, or planes whatever have got subsurf modifiers applied I'm in experimental mode uh, in the feature set so we can use some adaptive subdivision I'm going to use that instead of using normal maps um, and that's I suppose that'll do that's probably all you need to know from the setup so let's get going first I'll bring in the principal shader so we can take a look at it okay, there we go so some of it will look familiar, some may not, but it has it has all the all, all the basic things we need for PBR and some some stuff beyond that. But all we'll be looking at today really is the base color, the metallic roughness, and we would be using the normal map if we weren't using displacement. But we're going to be using displacement. So literally, it's just those three. Um, I'm not going to go through what all the other bits and bobs do. Um, as I said, Andrew Price has done a really good introduction where he tells you every little, uh, he summarizes every input there. So um, if, if you want to dig deeper into the shader, take a look at that intro. But I just want to focus on the, the, the core sort of PBR um, metallic roughness workflow textures that we've, uh, we've used in the past in previous tutorials. So. As I said, first thing we're going to make is the one from Polygon. Um, we're going to go one step further than the basic material and also add, uh, we're going to affect the roughness with some wiping residue to add a bit of realism. Because realism is good. We like realism, don't we? Oh yeah, one other thing I've done with the scene. There's also this uh, uh, lamp I've put in. It's so we can move it around and look at reflections more closely. Um, rather than rely on the lighting from the HDR. So, that's there. Anyway, uh, where we go in? Image texture, we've got all our images loaded because I've used them on the materials we just deleted. So that's certainly gonna help. And we're gonna be using these to begin with. Tiles Rectangular White 001. That's the name of the, the uh, texture pack on polygon.com if you wanna get the same one. Um, we'll leave the input at color because this one's going to be affecting color and funny enough plug it into the color Boom now you won't really see much. I actually thought it wasn't working for a minute <laughs> Before I started recording, but if you take a look at the color on its own You'll see there's not much to it because they're white tiles. There's some very slight uh, variations and whatnot um, In the material I assume these were made in substance designer. It looks like it to me anyway, but uh, yeah don't be alarmed when you plug in the color and don't see anything you're not really supposed to so that's fine now we'll just add in the other ones no we've already got them 
uh, we want the glossy that we will change to non-color data we're also going to need the well there's no metallic map for this one so it's going to be just the displace, uh, displacement I suppose yeah it should just be these three textures we'll need but we'll also bring in as I mentioned the wiping residue one which is that one there but we'll, yeah we need to change over to non-color data but I'll move that one over there because we don't need it right now so we've already got the base color in um, what I will do uh, just to give us some control of the look I'm going to add in a color mix RGB plug that in there change it to multiply now if we take a closer look at the uh, gloss one you'll notice it's got the cracks because um, it's, it's telling the uh, this is a, a gloss texture so the tiles will be really shiny but the cracks in between which will be that kind of filling stuff I'm not good when it comes to interior decorating so I'm not sure what it's called but the the stuff between the tiles that's not reflective so on the gloss map that's black to, to indicate that but I'm, I'm gonna feed that in to this multiply node and then that gives us the option of slightly changing the color in case we want to I'm probably not going to but I like building in controls into the material because now the colors got that slight sort of darkened bit between um, in case you wanted to uh, create a slightly different effect older tiles maybe uh, or something along those lines but I'll turn that down for now but we've got the control there should we need it so this is a gloss map and the principal shader doesn't have a gloss input it has a roughness input now the, the it's basically the invert yeah the roughness is the invert of gloss um, for most applications anyway so throughout this tutorial just to keep us on the exact same page all of the tinkering we'll do we do to the maps will be done as gloss and then we'll invert it into roughness before putting it into the shader it's perfectly okay to work in 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 roughness um early on it's just it, just to keep things the same we'll work in gloss and then convert to roughness so let's add, add in a uh, color ramp which you're going to see a lot of in this tutorial <laughs> I love my color ramps um, I've got node wrangler enabled so when I hit control shift left click it automatically puts in a viewer node which is just an emission shader uh, to the color ramp and it allows us to instantly preview the different materials or shaders or whatever so got it selected to the color ramp and now we are going to play with it a little bit I'm going to slightly raise the black up just want it to be a bit more noticeable the, the uh, I want less reflection or no reflection on those edges there I want it to be a little bit more noticeable so I'm going to bring it up uh, but like I said we, I mean we've, we've polygon textures the whole idea is you don't really need to, to, to tinker much uh, so we won't be on this uh, material uh, hard, well, hardly at all not making much sense am I I'm a little rusty I've not made a tutorial in a while which I'm, I must uh, apologize for um, work's been keeping me really busy it sucks it really does I, 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 I love making these videos I wish I could make them more often uh, I'm, I'm certainly going to try to but uh, anyway we've only, I've put in the invert node and that has converted our gloss map into a roughness map as we can see here so the black areas in a roughness map are the really shiny parts and the white areas are 100% rough not glossy in the slightest so I'll put that into the roughness map and now when we select our shader it's starting to come together there we go now let's see if I want to use any of that effect just a slight little hint of it is nice isn't it yeah I like that maybe a little less yeah so that breaks up our tiles a little bit um, and you, you can see it's it's doing everything for you these, these polygon textures are great you just plug them in press go boom uh, all we've got left to do on this material then is whack in the displacement and also uh, put in the wiping residue in fact we'll do the wiping residue first because that's, that's part of the roughness so we'll take a look at this texture and as you can see 
La -da. It's just a just a wiping residue, <laughs> like like it's been cleaned. Um, the effect from here looks like it's going to be incredibly messy, um, but it doesn't have to be. So I'll put in a color amp again, just to give us some control. Now we're affecting the gloss, not uh, roughness. As I said, we're going to be working in gloss. Uh, and then converting at the end. So we want this white residue to take away from the shininess, not add to it. And in gloss, white is more shiny. So we'll invert that, and then I'll bring down this value a little. There we go, maybe quite a bit actually. So there's all our mark. In fact, you know what I can do? forget that I'm gonna put that back to what it was maybe lower this value a little so it's not quite as strong and what we'll do is subtract that value from that value yeah hopefully that makes some sort of sense so I'll change that to subtract drop that in there and then when we preview this you can't see anything <laughs> Maybe I've made it a bit too weak of an effect. There you go. So if I've, I put it up to maximum now, which might look too strong on the actual thing, we'll check in a moment. But as you can see, it's subtra it's subtra subtracting the uh, white values of this one from the white values of this one, which is giving us the the result we want. Um, so yeah, that's good. What I'll do then is turn that on. Boom. I'm, and you can already see. Hopefully that's clear there on the video. The effect it's having, it's actually quite subtle. I, 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 I thought at full strength there it would be a bit uh, overpowering, but I quite like that, at least as far as I can tell like this. Uh, we can get a closer look at it though by, if I turn off the HDR for a moment, like so, and plug in that light. You can see why I put it in now, it gives us a nice sort of way of looking. And no, that actually does look good, doesn't it? I like it. Let's play with this value a little. Turn down just a little tiny bit. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, that material is pretty much done already. One of the benefits of using paid uh, <laughs> texture sources certainly cuts down on the workload. All we need to do is sort out the displacement, which is easy. I'm not going to go into much detail uh, over micro displacement because it's been covered uh, in plenty of tutorials in the past. Not mine, <laughs> mind you, but plenty. Um, so let's add in a math node. This is just to give us some control over the amount of displacement, though again, with, with a with polygon textures, they're pretty much set up perfectly, so we'll leave it at one. But certainly on the materials we'll be creating, we'll, we'll need all sorts of different values to get it right. Um, what I will say is I, I've, I've set the dicing scale to 0 0.4, um, and the ratio uh, to the of preview to two, so it will be the, the dicing rate will be double in the in the viewport than it will be in the render, and the lower the dicing scale, the the more polygons the better the detail but it, it does get quite memory intensive i think the render of just those three planes uh, took up two gig of my gpu memory so for some people that value is going to be a little low and you're going to want to raise it but it should be fine for us for now so let's go back to rendered mode with displacement you'll notice i switch from solid to rendered a lot and that's because you kind of need to um the uh displacement doesn't tend to update when you're when you're changing things like if I was to change the the multiply value it wouldn't actually change anything though I did forget something you'll notice that's not displacing anything at the moment and that's because under the material um, under displacement it's set to bump you need to change that to true and now when I hit rendered unless it wants to make me look stupid it will actually be displacing oh it's not doing it is it or is it Oh, it actually is, yeah. It's just hard to tell. 
yeah, you can actually, you can just about see that it's displacing the plane because they're really flat tiles. Yeah, it's it's not having as much of an effect, but certainly on the other materials, you know, it's a big difference. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's how you set up a a polygon material with some wiping residue. Job done. Very very quick, very easy, very nice result. I I'll say now I, I use polygon a lot. I use it for a, a, a pretty much everything I do these days. But not too long ago, I remember a time when I hated paying for textures because I was, I was quite skint at the time. I didn't have much money. It was I just got into Blender. It was, it was a, a hobby I didn't spend a huge amount of time on, so I couldn't really justify spending money on on, on textures. And I'm sure there's a lot of you that will fall into the same category. So that's why I wanted to do this tutorial. I want to show you that you can download those free textures from cdtextures.com and still make good materials. Um, that said, if you're serious about getting into CG or, the, the, or you're finding this hobby is becoming a bigger and bigger part of your life, then start spending a bit of money on textures and HDRs. It's, it, it's worth it. It really is. Anyway, enough gabbing on and let's get on with the next material. So, we'll create that material again. New. Uh, change that to true before I forget. Delete the diffuse shader and add in a principled one, like so. Fantastic. Now, we're only going to bring in one texture for this. And that is, oh, I can't see it. Textures, tiles, boom, seamless. So yeah, if you go to cdtextures.com, this is textures.com tiles plane 0247-7 seamless whatever that's the name of it um, in case you want to grab the same one now we're going to be basically doing the same thing that we just did on the previous one but making our own maps maps from this single texture so if i plug it in so we can see what we've got um it's not identical to the polygon one the the tiles have got bigger spacings the uh stuff in between the dials is, is uh, thicker and darker uh, which is fine it doesn't matter it's just uh, just something to bear in mind if, if we're not going to get it looking exactly like the one that we just made because it's it's a different sort of tile but we'll get it pretty close now uh, what am I doing my brain's just gone numb right <laughs> create the different maps so we're going to move on now to create the roughness map we've obviously got our color map don't have to do anything else with that so let's go to our color ramp have a look at it and see what we want to do so this is going to be the uh, same as uh, as before we're going to work in glossy and then move uh, and then invert it into a uh, roughness map before plugging it into the shader so right off the bat it's pretty much exactly where we want it we want to slightly raise the black value so those bits in the middle are darker but not too much we don't want to impact the uh, shading of the actual tiles and then we'll grab the other end bring it down and that will make the tiles themselves completely white i.e. 100 percent glossy or zero roughness however you want to look at it now you just have to fiddle around with these values a little bit until you get something like that that should be fine brilliant so that's our basic uh, gloss map but like before we want some wiping residue but that wiping residue is a paid texture from polygon so it can't be in this delightful free material so what we'll do instead is do our best to recreate it with some noise uh, it's not quite as nice it, it, up, 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 up close it won't hold up um, but for a, a, a more distant shot, something not that noticeable, it actually works pretty well. So we'll grab a noise texture, um, probably two actually. Let's get the factors right. We'll set this one to about 30. No, eight. And that one to about four. Yeah, now we'll grab some color ramps. This will all make sense in a minute some sort of sense anyway as much sense as you're going to get out of me and um, we just want to basically exaggerate these uh, values a little bit 
There we go. Same with this one. I've forgotten something, I'm not sure what. It's probably important. Aha, I know what it is. Cool. You got this distortion value. Let's crank that up to about uh, seven. Yeah, and on that one, about four. As you can see, that makes some nice swirly patterns, not too dissimilar from the wiping residue. And then if we grab a math node and we'll set it to, we'll try sub subtract maybe. Going off memory here. Yeah, that's not bad. I'll just swap that over. Yeah. No, I'll leave it on that one. Um, we might have to play, in fact, do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get rid of those. I'll drop that in there. That gives us a sort of pattern to work with, and then I'll use a color ramp for the adjustments just to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. I'll play with that. Yeah, we'll try that. So, like before. What we want to do is subtra uh, subtract the white values of this one from the white values of that one. So we'll do it like so. And there you go. With some noise patterns, you've, you've basically done exactly what was uh, what was happening in the previous one, and created some sort of uh, some variation in the in the in the gloss map, which we'll now convert into a roughness map to see how that's looking. Now I'd say that's a bit OTT, personally I think that's going to look a bit silly, so we'll need to bring down this white value a bit, maybe something like that, yeah, and one more thing actually, I want to add in a, yeah we'll see how that looks, I don't want to overcomplicate this one because this is, this is the the simple uh, material that we're making. Uh, the, the, the third one's the one where we're really going to go crazy. So let's not go too over the top with this one built. Okay, Write that into roughness, and then let's have a look at that. And yeah, we've got basically the same effects that we had before. You can see the the uh, imperfections in the reflections and whatnot. If I turn off the uh, HDR and bring back that lamp. I need to blue. I'm just turned off all the other layers, haven't I? Idiot! So I grab this lamp and move that to about there. That was yeah. You can see the imperfections in the in the reflections. It looks pretty good, I think might be a bit over the top in the final render but I don't I don't think that's too bad yeah okay so we've got that in so like before we just need to do the displacement but we don't have a displacement map so you guess what we're going to be adding in next yep another color ramp now with displacement um, Gray values like mid gray 0.5 is not going to affect the height of the micro displacement at all. Black will displace inwards and white outwards. I don't know if they're the best words to use, it's the best way I can think to describe it. So we'll lower this white value because we don't want the tiles to poke out, we just want them to stay at roughly the, the normal sort of value. But we'll exaggerate the dark areas by moving this up a little. Now you, you see a problem here. We've got some uh, variation in the colouring of the tiles, which is good for our other maps, but not for this one. Um, and also, I didn't realise it had that sort of variation. I think I want to bring that down a little bit and get get some of that variation back into the map. Sorry to be jumping around, but I just want to make sure we get the right effect there. Oh, now I've really ruined it, haven't I? It's not glossy enough. 
Yeah, I made it way too rough. So let's bring it down. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, that's better. Anyway, let's get back to what we were doing, sorry. Um, those variations will affect the height, and we don't want that. We want we want the tiles to be flat tiles like the way tiles are. So, we'll bring that way down, and there you go. It's all just a blank gray color, which means they'll be nice and flat as far as the displacement goes. Then all we need to do is add in a math node, which will be our control over the amount of displacement. Um, we'll try it on one to begin with, but I have a sneaky suspicion that might be a bit harsh. Okay, now, as I said, with displacement, when you change the, the values, it doesn't actually do it live. You have to hit render it again. I assume because it's got to rebuild the, the scene, as it were. But it's way too much. <laughs> That's some chunky tiles. Okay, let's try about 0.25, a quarter of what we just used. Let's see how that looks. Still a bit harsh, maybe. Yeah, isn't it? Okay, let's try about 0.1, no, 0.075. Come on. Uh, yeah, that works. And there we go, our finished tile material using a free texture from CG Textures and still coming up with what I think is a pretty nice result. Um, one thing I would possibly do, the grouting, oh is that the word for the stuff between the tiles, is it grouting? Oh, I don't know, whatever, that's what I'm going to call it, grouting. I think it's a bit dark, so what I would like to do if possible, if we go to the colour there, and if I put in a, uh, come on wake up Bill, what do I want, brightness and contrast might be the one we need and turn down the contrast yeah and that lessens the the darkness of the tiles so then when we reconnect that into the color ooh, much nicer there we go but we still have the ability to then uh, adjust the, the the darkness of the the grouting or whatever by by changing that value but yeah anyway tiles done looking pretty and for free free is good I like free right so that's two materials down one to go now this one's gonna be a little crazy we're gonna be basically doing what we just did to get a metal uh, sort of grated floor uh, material in place and then we're going to use masks to mix in some uh, moss and some mud. All to, all of these textures are from CG textures, and they are free. I use the I even use the low resolution ones because they, if you've not been to CG textures, the, the, the low resolution ones free, and then you pay a little more for the for the non free ones. Uh, but I use the low resolution for for all of these because we're making free materials here. Uh, Okay, so image, floor, let's have a look at that. We should also bring in our principal shader. We're not going to get very far with that, that I suspect. Okay, so that's our, that's our texture, which has run away. Behave. Now I'm going to change the tiling on this to two. I thought that was a bit high in the one I did earlier, so we'll do 1.5. There we go, that's quite nice. Awesome. And obviously, you can guess where that's going to go. It's going to get fed straight into the color. And then we can view it there. It looks great. Well, it don't, it looks awful, but you get the idea. So, next up, you'd be getting used to the workflow by now, I would imagine. We're going to make the roughness map as gloss and then convert to roughness. I worded that better, couldn't I? In fact, no, we're not. I tell a lie because this material uses a different map. We need a metallic map. 
because this delightful little value here changes the shader between uh, dielectric and metallic. Everything we've done so far has been dielectric, but this has got metal bits in it. Um, if I turn the value up, you'll instantly see the sort of effect it has, turning it into a, a metal type of shader. In fact, if I disconnect the color for a second um, and turn down the roughness, there you go. It's just a complete mirrored metal effect, whereas if you turn it down, it's more of a uh, plastic. Um, but parts of this material are going to need metal, parts are not. Um, so we need a map to say what's what, basically. So it's basically going to be the inverter of that, isn't it? Because the white areas will be metallic and the black areas will be non-metallic. So there we go, that's close. And now we just need to drag this down. So it's just the little lumpy bits. I have no idea what they're called either. I should I should Google names before recording these things, shouldn't I? But for the for the remainder of this tutorial, I will be referring to these white things as lumpy bits. So well, lumpy bits will be white. The rest will be black because it's a a, a a paint which is not metallic. Um, we'll feed that into the metallic shader or the metallic input, and well, that's that basically. So then when we click on that, you can see how it's having an effect. Those bits are clearly using the metal, whereas the rest is using the uh, dielectric. In fact, it's not that clear, is it? But trust me, it is. <laughs> uh, we're adding another color ramp now. Shebang. And this is going to be our roughness map, um, which we're also going to invert because we want the white bits to be really quite shiny and the paint to be not that shiny. Something, something like that should do the trick nicely. We'll then invert that, and that will give us our uh, roughness map. It might not be quite rough enough, actually, or too rough, I mean. Um, yeah, that works pretty well. It's pretty shiny, but remember, we're going to be adding in displacement, and that should fix that up nicely. Um, but you can easily affect that by playing with this value. Maybe something like that will do nice. Yeah. Okay, so next up is the displacement map. Guess what? We've got a color ramp again. And this one's easy. We want the displacement to be poking outwards, so we want the lumpy bits to be white. So again, we'll flip the uh, the map. We'll turn this down to a grey colour. Um, no, no, we won't. Turn that up. Boom. And we'll move this until it's kind of grey. Yeah. I think something like that will be okay. If you wanted to cut down on this lumpiness, I don't. I actually want that te the paint to have some texture to it. Um, but if you didn't, it's going to be difficult to achieve that with just that slider. So what you could do is add in another slider, set that to white, and then move that to about there. Oof, that's awful. There you go. So you you can make it suggest those bits are are white but I don't want I don't actually want that I want the the paint to have a bit of texture so we'll do it like that math node multiply to give us some control you know the drill by now plug that into displacement bam now I have to go to solid and then re-render so I've done it again material needs to be changed to true displacement and bam now they are really poking out aren't they <laughs> so yeah we're going to probably want to half that to about 0.5 rebuild that also remember this is using half the resolution that the final render will use because it's in the viewport so it won't be quite smooth now I don't mind the lumpy bits they look all right but the the paint's too lumpy i don't want lumpy paint no not that lumpy anyway so we need to add in a few more 
changes to this chap. I'm going to disconnect the displacement for now so it's easy to see what we're doing. Cool. Well, this is really going to be a matter of add, we're going to ha actually have to add in two, I think. One, two, lessen the variation in the paint. Turn that down a bit. And this one to lessen the variation in the actual uh, lumpy bits. Really hard to see, so it will take some playing around. One thing I don't like is these kind of black areas. There's not much we can do about that though. Maybe, yeah, if we maybe do that. Ooh, that's too much. In fact, maybe change that up to a grey. I should lessen the. Yeah. That should work a bit. Okay, it, it will take some playing around, as you probably suspected at this point, but you can get there in the end. So now I'll rebuild, not material mode, stupid bill. There we go, we've got flatter looking lumpy bits and the paint's not quite as extremely lumpy. Uh, I think that will work pretty nicely for what we're doing. In fact, you know, honestly, I think that needs to come down a bit more. Maybe a point three. And then, I, then I'm going to keep it whatever because I'm spending too long on this. Not a time for being a perfectionist, Bill. It's a tutorial. There we go. Good enough. I like it. Okay, so that's our basic material. And because it's going to get a lot more complicated, I'm going to group that into a frame. So we know that's our material. Boom. Next, I'm going to bring in a moss texture. And I'm also going to duplicate the principal shader and the material output, just temporarily. You'll see why in a moment. It's because I'm going to use that material output instead of that one, which allows us to work separately from the main material. And then we can delete that and connect it in afterwards. So what we want is the moss texture which is also going to need to be uh, fiddled with in terms of layout. Maybe two. Mm, maybe 1.5, same as the floor tiles. Yeah, that'll do. And we're basically gonna do exactly the same thing that we've been doing all day. Plug that into the color, give it a gloss map which might actually work straight away just we just need we just want it to be less because moss isn't particularly shiny but it's got some reflectivity to it then we'll add in the invert turn it into a roughness map and then plug it into roughness it should work and then we just need to make a displacement map which again should work without having to redo really anything to it. Though I always like having the color ramp there for fiddling about later in case we need to. Change that to about 0.2, plug that into there. We don't need to set it to true because we're still in the same material. And then if I go into rendered mode, that will whack up the displacement. Yeah, some funky looking moss. Perhaps a little lumpy. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with it for now. So we've got our moss material, which we'll also plug into a frame. And then I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to be doing pretty much exactly the same thing, but for mud. So I'll change this texture to our soil texture, whatever it's called. I'll make sure the names of these are in the YouTube comments, don't worry. And then we'll, let's take a look at these maps first of all. It's still got the, the moss displacements, I need to unplug that. 
Um, so this is our gloss. I'm going to make the mud a little bit shinier, so it's kind of wet maybe, which will affect the roughness map a little, but not much. Let's plug that into roughness, that into colour. Eh, it's not looking too bad. I don't like the colour of the mud, so I'm going to add in a hue and saturation node, just so we can play around with the colour of the mud. Change that to maybe a 0 0.48, slight reddish tone to it. Uh, Oversaturate it a little bit, yeah, and maybe darken it up. Yeah, that's more mud-like in it, or at least the sort of mud that I want. Boom. But we will need to change the value of this a bit because it's only good, we're only going to be using little bits of it. So I want I want to see that variation in the color and whatnot. Excellent. Plug that into the displacement just to check on that as well. I'm going to make that a bit higher. These clumps of mud do tend to pop out, don't they? Maybe even higher. Do 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 do. Yeah, lumpy mud. Don't you just love it? Okay, so we now have our primary texture, our moss, and our mud. And now we need to combine these all together. And we're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to delete these nodes here. We're going to do that with masks. So I'm going to add in an image texture like so. Change this back to the UV image editor and I'm going to call this new moss mask. I say new because obviously I created one when I was mucking about. I just want to make sure we don't get confused. So new moss mask. I'm going to select that mask with the uh, image texture there and I'm going to jump back over to the default view so we can focus in on what we're doing and go over to texture paint and you notice it's black which means it's worked with that node that image texture node selected and your texture within it that means you'll be painting onto that texture which is exactly what we want to do um, I'm not going to give much of a tutorial on the on the painting uh, features one because there's loads to it and two I'm not particularly good at painting but basically F changes the size of the brush shift F changes the strength and that's all you really need for this so let's just paint in where we want some moss I'm gonna have some over here some over here lighter amounts there there we go as you can see I'm putting loads of effort into this and I'm just going to smear, I'm using a smear brush now just to make it less uh, well, less obvious it's been drawn in five seconds <laughs> hopefully there we go so we have kind of a a mask there I'm just going to switch this over to black for a second um, and just take away bits here it's a bit too much what I had in mind. Anyway, stop clicking, Bill. You've done it. It's good enough. Go back to our nodes view. Got a texture there. Now, before you do anything, hit save. Save that texture because the second you try and hit render, uh, it will get rid of that texture. So save as image. Boom. Done. Now that texture is saved, and we have our mask. We can test this by going into rendered mode, selecting the texture, and there it is, we have our mask. So we're going to use this mask to mix our maps together. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. I'll disconnect the displacement and move those over here. And we need to add in a mix RGB, and we need three of them. Now, not four, because we're not going to be changing the metallic one at all. Because my, my thinking is it's a floor, people are walking over it. So any moss that would form on the lumpy bits is going to get scraped off by people's feet. So all the mud 
and moss we're going to just apply to the painted area not the the metal area um it doesn't have to be like that that's just that's just how i've decided to do it in this material so we won't be affecting the metallic texture and we'll, we'll also need to subtract those values in the metallic texture away from our mask um but i'm getting ahead of myself so we've got our car just so you know what these are this can be the color one the roughness and the displacement yeah so we want to feed the color one from here into there and this was our moss wasn't it yeah moss so we feed the moss color into there and then the mask into the factor so if we take a look at that uh, shader as it is now it's just the colors and you can see it's mixed in the moss quite nicely we'll be adjusting it a bit further but just so you can see it's working which it is that's good so now we'll take the uh, roughness map and it is a roughness map because we've taken it after the invert point roughness map into the mix shader and same from the moss and grab the mix again boom and there we have our roughness map and you can see the mossy areas are getting the extra roughness which is good and then we're going to grab the displacement from both so displacement boom displacement boom and then we can take a look at our displacement map and that has that worked no because we didn't plug the mask in because i'm an idiot boom there we go so we've got different just different amounts of displacement but you'll notice that the displacement is getting rid of the lumpy bits at all unless this is some pretty corrosive moss those lumpy bits would still be there. So rather than mix, we want to add. Yeah, we want to add the. Uh, is it add or subtract? No, add. So we're adding. Add. Ooh. You make me mad. So we're adding the displacement from the moss on top of the displacement that's already there, which is exactly what we want, and that looks pretty good to me. So we have our three maps, but we do need to adjust them slightly. Now these three lines, if you hold shift to draw a line, boop, it creates a little point, which means that we can affect, we can add in extra nodes into this line and it will affect all three. So what we're gonna do is add in a, another math node, change it to subtract, and grab the metallic value, which is that chap there, drag that down into the math node and boom you'll see it's now subtracted the uh, the metal areas away from the mask so now when we look at our maps you see that you can still see the, the color of the metal through there the reflectivity is still there and same with the well that's pretty much the same anyway but yeah it's, it's combined them nicely. So now when we feed these into our main shader, it would have added the moss in, hopefully, pretty well. That's our displacement, boom. So now, in case you're getting a bit confused with all your nodes and whatnot, there should only be one that leads up to the original texture, and that should be the metallic. We'll add in another frame, just so we can keep our mix values together. So we know now that this is all to do with mixing in the moss into the main texture. And that should look pretty good. Just re-render that, make sure everything's working as is. So when we look at the moss, we should see a bit of lumpiness to it, which we do. See how it's lump that the moss is being added uh, to the displacement there without affecting the, the original pattern yeah looks pretty good what we do want to do though is add in a bit of extra control so just before the subtract node or just after it doesn't actually matter uh, we want to put in a color ramp like so and then if we look at the color ramp that's our mask again and it allows us to exaggerate the mask or lessen it if need be yeah but i'm going to do it from the main texture view just try and bring in a bit more moss maybe take it away a little just maybe yeah about there just want to exaggerate the, the effect of the moss just a little bit 
cool. And then to polish this off nicely, we're going to do very much the same as what we just did. Um, just for extra confusion. <laughs> uh, so let's grab another image texture, create another new image. This one we call New Mud Mask. Boom. I'll save it now before I forget. And new mud mark, no, behave, new mud mask. Jump over to default view, jump to texture paint, and this will be our mud. If you're looking for uh, some more in depth tutorials on texture painting, you're not going to find any on my channel because, as I said, I'm rubbish at it. Um, I, I, I mostly use it for things like this, to be honest, just masks and, and whatnot. Uh, I prefer Substance Painter for my texture painting, but there's plenty of good tutorials out there, so do take a look if you want to get into that side of things. But for our purposes, I do believe this will work nicely. Smear this a little. Uh, oh, it'll do. It'll do. I mean, when you were, if you're doing this for real, and this is a real scene, not just a, a blank plane, you'd want to be concentrating where you draw in. Oh, I'm saving the image again, by the way, because I've just finished finished editing it. We don't want it to get overwritten. Save image, boom. Uh, you put more effort into where you're putting the mud and the mask. Let's like, say it's a room. You'd want the the mud to be along the the edges and the corners uh, uh, more, perhaps, uh, unless it was something else that was that was there. Uh, that was causing it moss you might want to put around areas where there's uh, piping because maybe there's water dripping around making the place wet which is which is why the moss has grown if you think about it in terms like that um then you can you can create a more realistic looking looking result because you only can you, obviously i'm just doing moss and mud on some metal floor but you can use this for so many things so many things and it's, it's a brilliant technique and it's something i use a lot uh hopefully you will too but anyway, we have our mud mask, and now we're going to pretty much do exactly what we did here. I'm, I'm almost tempted just to quickly, in fact, I'm going to, to hell with it. I'm going to copy that, change that to the mud mask, um, and let's have a look at the ramp and stuff. That yeah, looks okay. We need to subtract the metal value again don't we so we'll plug that down into the subtract so our mask has the metal taken out and then it's just a matter of connecting up our maps though I do want to do one other thing before we do that I hope I'm not moving too quick here like I said I'm, tr I'm trying not to let this drag out too long because no one wants to hear me talk for a million years but I assume so anyway um, Let's add in a noise texture and up that to about 30, maybe 40. Yeah. And then we're going to add in another color ramp. Shocker, I know. Me and my color ramps, eh? We just want to get some real fine bits like that. That's what we're after. And we're going to subtract those away from our mask because mud tends to be clumpy in little bits. It doesn't tend to be smoothly painted onto a surface. Um, and we want to try and vaguely replicate that effect like so. You see, see the difference there, how it's taken away from the mask. Um, I do need to bring that down though. There we go. So now our mask has got like bits taken out of it because that's the way mud is. Now what we need to do is take these mixed values, which is the moss and the primary texture, primary material mixed together, uh, and add in our, uh, where we call it, mud. So drop those three in there. I'll bring that down here just so it's easy to grab. There's our color. There's our roughness, and there's our displacement. Now, if all this crazy noodling has worked, this should look pretty. Mm. 
awful. <laughs> we just need to lessen the effect of the mud, basically. So let's drag that one up. And we're going to lower the color of it until we get something we like. And one thing I don't like is you can't really see the details in the mud. I think that's because a lot of it's displacement and, and that wouldn't have updated yet. Yeah, we'll assume it's that anyway. Oh, I'm just looking at the color. So yeah, hopefully that'll be okay. Clearly it's worked there, so that's good. Our roughness map looks fine. As does our displacement. Okay. So now... We just need to plug these in to our, sh our uh, principal shader and we are good. Again, if you want to try and follow along to make sure you've not made any mistakes, um, the displacement, roughness and color should be coming from this mud mix group and the metallic should trace all the way back to the primary material. Now, if we've done all this right, when I hit that, and then go back into rendered mode. With any luck, we'll have a pretty cool looking material. Ugh. Something has gone wrong, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ah, I've got my displacement map plugged into my roughness. Boom, here we go. And there we go, not too bad. Uh, the mud needs a little work. Maybe the displacement needs to get upped a little bit, or maybe it's just because there's not enough air. Uh... Let's try that. Could also be the resolution we're working on. We don't have the most amount of detail in the viewport. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, stick it out. Now, like I said, the. The, the real trick here is the amount of effort you put into the masks. I put in practically none, as is very apparent. Um, but the, the, the principle is very sound. So all that we need to do now is run a final render and see what our three materials look like. So I'll pause the recording and do that now. Okay, so our finished materials uh, they, they, they turn out pretty well and um, the the wiping residue on our on our CG textures tiles the one in the middle there actually turns out better than than it did when I was when, when I was uh, putting the tutorial together so so that's certainly good um, I, I think the the thing to take away from this tutorial is that polygon provides a, a brilliant resource for for pretty much every material under the sun um, but with that being said if you're not looking to pay for your textures you can still make some fantastic results uh, from the free textures available out there and it, it, it might not even come it, it's not even necessarily a matter of uh, payment sometimes you, you you find a texture that isn't on a, a paid website and it's you, you find something that's very specific for, for what you want and you still want to be able to make a good PBR material from it you can um, so yeah I, I, hope, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this I hope you've learned a lot um, I've certainly enjoyed doing it <laughs> uh, it I, I, in the past future tutorials that I've done um, I've made promises or I won't say promises but but I've implied there'll be like a, a second part coming to something or something else or I've spoken about tutorials that then haven't come to light and it, it, it's literally just down to my workload I don't have the time uh, that I used to have um, and I'm gonna stop doing that now unless I know I'm, I'm making a tutorial that's definitely coming out I'll keep my mouth shut and won't even, won't even mention it on Twitter or whatever um, but yeah uh, Oh, oh, it's been good to uh, been good doing this. I I've enjoyed it, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll see you guys next time.